Hello, we're, we have the pleasure of having a musician, artist, songwriter, Tom Grant in the studio with us today. Uh, welcome, Tom. Thank you, Rodney. Glad to be here. Your listeners uh, hear from you today. Um, uh, when you're performing, uh, what is it that you want your listeners to, to take away? Well, I like to play beautiful music as much as I can. I like there to be plenty of beauty in in what they hear. And and I like for it to be a transcendent experience. I kind of, I, I've, I've listened to interviews with uh, Wynton Marsalis. He, he uses that expression a lot, transcendent. Because after all, that's what, that's what music does. I think when music is, is at a high level and it's reaching at the most profound state, it's transporting the listener and the player to a higher state. It's almost, it, it, it has sort of a religious component to it. Tom, your record store called Madrona Records. Uh, you wrote about that in uh, some detail. Uh, tell us a little bit about how that influenced you and the kind of the bridge or the arc you think that uh, created with you choosing a career in music. Well, it had a lot to do with it because uh, it, that was my dad's record store. So I was just a, a kid when he set it up and. I think he might have opened it in 1950 or 49 or something like that. Uh, and uh, he had the, the widest selection of jazz and, and R&B music of any of the record stores at that time. So I used to spend my, well, I spent Sundays down there uh, with my dad. And in those days, businesses weren't open seven days a week like they are now, but uh, he was always closed on Sunday. So I, that was our day to go down there, and he would do his uh, paperwork and stuff, and I would uh, I would listen to records. Uh, there was no such thing as shrink wrap in those days, so I would just take records out of the sleeve and go to a machine and play them. Uh, we we used the record store like it was a library too. We would take records home, listen to them, and take them back. And there was no taping them mm -hmm. in, in those days. Uh, so yeah, it was very important. Uh, my dad had uh, people like Charlie Parker would come through town, and they would come to the my dad's store. He, my my father also did a, a radio show from from the store, and uh, people like Charlie Parker would come through town, and uh, Louis Armstrong and people like that, uh, the, all the jazz greats. And uh, so it was, uh, it had a big impact on my learning to play, because that's how I learned to play, was by listening to great, other uh, great musicians like Errol Garner was one of my favorites. Uh, uh, well, later on, Herbie Hancock and people like Chip Corea, Art Tatum. Uh, so mm -hmm. I used to listen to those records. And especially uh, Miles Davis and John Coltrane, they were like, had the biggest influence. Precisely because their their way of improvising was, wasn't just you know playing licks and stuff like that it was playing beautiful melodies and you listen to those records and you hear the way those guys soloed it was it was like a singer like a vocalist uh singing these gorgeous melodies and sure there was lots of uh crazy licks and and things that were very uh, specific to jazz as an idiom at that time, but there was great beauty in what they had to say musically. As you look back, what would you define as um, uh, your big break? Well, probably the, the, there was a uh, trumpet player named Woody Shaw, who was a, 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 a very well-known and very accomplished trumpet player. Back in the 60s, he would win all the downbeat polls for trumpets, and he, he was very much ascendant at, the, at that time. He was coming up through the ranks. One night, 
uh, I happened to be playing with some friends at a club in Portland, and Woody was in town. He came to our gig that night on somebody's recommend, recommendation. He sat in with our band, and the next thing I know, he he hired us to do a little tour with him. Uh, he was going up to British Columbia, and, and that gig led to, because he was friends with Joe Henderson, who was another downbeat pole winner, one of the top voices in uh, tenor saxophone in the 60s. He was a blue note artist. And so uh, that led to a gig with Joe Henderson. And my friend Ron Steen and I were uh, were on the road with Joe for, I don't know, a couple of years. And we did, we did a tour of Europe. And I recorded my first record with Joe Henderson in Europe. Uh, he was the producer of it. And... Uh, that was kind of that was kind of the beginning. That was my first record. I think I've got 26 records now to my name as a leader. Tom, you're um, you're going to be in Seattle uh, in October. Tell us a little bit about the workshop. Who should be there, and who's going to benefit most from from attending? Improvising is is something that uh, a lot of musicians strive to do. A lot of classical musicians. This is one of the reasons I ever got into doing work workshops or master classes in the first place. Is a really wonderful and, and accomplished classical players would come up to me and say, how do you do that? I mean, I can play anything. I can play anything written by uh, Chopin, Prokofiev, you name it. Uh, any, I, I can play all these and, and play them perfect, but I can't Improvise. I don't get it. I don't know how do you do what you do. So I try to break that down a little bit with people who are musicians and show how you can start with with very simple things, but a, a lot of it is just freeing your your brain and allowing yourself to experiment with things. We're going to do the workshop at – this is on October 3rd. We're doing the workshop uh, at 10 in the morning on that day, 10, probably till 12 or so. So, okay, here's who I wish would come is music teachers, like classical teachers, students who are interested in, in maybe in getting into jazz, classical players that are curious about what makes jazz the improvisation. And frankly, anybody else that that might like my music, that might be familiar with it, or not, you know, uh, I, I would just like to get all people who love music to to come, but especially the folks that that play classical music and are jazz curious. Tom, thanks for uh, spending a few minutes to uh, learn a little bit more about the artist and uh, spotlighting the workshop that's coming up and uh, all the music that you've uh, given to us over the years. Well, thank you, Rodney. I really appreciate your doing this, uh, taking the time to talk to me. Pleasure was mine. Uh, take care, Tom.